Hey everybody, this is Mr. Storm. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about digital advertising and how it generally works online. So the role of digital advertising is to increase sales or improve brand awareness. That's really the goal of all advertising, but this is especially um, important online because there are so many products out there. There are, you know, for every product there that exists, there are, you know, hundreds of competitors and the best way to reach customers today, right now, these days, is via online advertisements. So we're gonna talk about the shape that these can take and some of the terms that you might hear when we're talking about digital advertisements. So there are many different types of ads. A banner ad is an image-based advertisement that appears on the side, top, bottom, you know, wherever it, it can be on a web page. Um, you'll see these all the times when you visit web pages. You'll see banner ads all over the place. There are uh, retargeting ads, which uses your past web history to target a specific ad to you. When people talk about big data, how companies are buying and selling your data, this is usually what they're doing. They're looking for your past browsing history or your purchasing history, and they're targeting products specifically to you they think that you would like, you would want to buy. Flash ads, um, banner ads that uses flash design, usually with an interactive element. If you've ever seen an ad that says, you know, click here, you know, play this game and, you know, your cursor turns into, I don't know, like a, like a dart and there's a dart board in the background and whatever. They're trying to get you to interact with the ad a little bit. A lot of mobile ads, um, smartphone ads do this, especially in video games where um, you know the advertisement itself lets you play a small version of the game to try to get you interested. And then mobile ads. Mobile ads are, you know, obviously they're ads that appear on smartphones, tablets, or mo mobile devices, and these have a special design quality to them. Um, now, most, most people are using their cell phones to uh, browse the internet. Um, it's actually become more popular to browse the internet using a cell phone uh, than it is to use a, than than it is using a computer, and so a lot of ads are designed with mobile in mind. So here here are what those examples look like. So up at the top, you see a banner ad there on CNN.com. Uh, there's one here, and there's also one on the side. We're going to create one of each in this uh, this week. Then we have retargeting ads, essentially where, you know, someone finds out or, you know, someone uh, tracks your browsing history and then they retarget uh, an ad to you. Flash ads uh, over here. This isn't great. This, it's hard to kind of show off what a flash ad looks like, but this um, Venza ad down here, this actually lets you spin the car around and click and go inside the car, inside the ad space there. And then mobile ad, obviously, uh, you know, ads that pop up on a mobile phone. So let's talk about the kinds of ads that you might see. So ad mob ads. So these are ads that appear in mobile apps, um, most of the time allowing an app to be free for users. So a lot of games follow this platform uh, where I will put a game for free. I will put a game on you know the, 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 the online marketplace for free, whether it's Google Play or apps, uh, you know, Apple's App Store. Um, I'll put a game up there for free, but in between each level you have to pay attention to an ad. Um, or I might have an incentive structure in the game where, um, you know, in order to get, uh, you know, more free plays or in order to increase your level of resource in the game, you have to watch an ad, right? Um, those are incredibly popular. Now, it's important that um, you don't overuse these because there tends to be a backlash against companies that use these primarily as their main main focus for advertisement. If a player sees that ad for your product way too many times when they're playing a game, it could turn them off from buying the product. Now, there's a sweet spot here because obviously people need to see your ad in order to understand that your product exists and we need to incentivize people in into playing your game or buying your product or whatever it is. But, uh, you know, Here's where th this is one of those those places where um, uh, 
analytics comes into play, right? Uh, having a healthy amount of respect for uh, uh, gathering numbers and doing the nerdy stuff and figuring it out, figuring out exactly what rate of of display is good for your advertisement. Um, are people seeing it too much and getting annoyed, or are they not seeing it enough and you're not bringing in customers that you're, you know, are you missing customers? Um, email advertisements. So these are advertisements that are sent to people via email, obviously. Now these are. Um, less in fashion as they used to be. Um, I remember in the earlier days of email, I would be getting email ads all the time. Um, now, uh, people are more savvy than they used to be and they understand how to unsubscribe from email newsletters and they learn how to um, you know, get rid of uh, you know, companies. They, they know how to, how to move those ads directly into their spam. So a lot of companies don't dedicate a ton of time to this. Luckily, it's pretty easy to generate an email ad blast. Um, but again, that's one of those things you have to determine for yourself and for your company. Is this something that I want to annoy my customers with or is this something that could potentially bring people in? Above the fold. So above the fold, it refers to, it's, it's a callback to old newspaper advertising terms. So, uh, you know, newspapers, they fold in half, right? So you have the top half and then the, the bottom half of the page, and that bottom half is usually hidden, right? We only see the top half whenever we're looking at newspapers and the newsstands. So above the fold refers to advertisements that are on that top half. That's usually the best space to put an advertisement because you don't have to go digging for the advertisement. Now, uh, newspapers don't put ads above the fold, but on a web page, above the fold refers to that first screenshot of the page that you see. Um, as soon as you go to the website, that first bit of the page you see without having to scroll down. So if an ad is on that first piece, that's the most um, uh, valuable ad space on a website. Pop-ups. These are you know ads that pop up over the web page and you have to click out of them in order to continue using the web page. These are incredibly unpopular uh, right now. Um, and especially because many people install ad block or pop-up blockers and ad blockers on their on their uh, browsers, so pop-up ads are generally considered a nuisance these days. Don't use pop-up pop-up ads unless it's on your own website and you're trying to promote something. But even then, probably be careful with using these. And then floating ad. This is an ad that appears in a layer over the content, but it's not in a separate window. So these ads are hard to close um, and they, they're they built kind of intentionally to be hard to close. They want you to try to click the X, but you accidentally hit it one pixel over and you end up opening up the, the uh, you end up clicking on the ad itself. Um, these are also really, really bad. The reason why people use floating ads right now is because of the pop-up blockers. Uh, they're trying to get around pop-up blockers by using a different form of object in web development that isn't actually a pop-up. It looks like a pop-up, but it's floating on top of the page itself. Um, again, these are pretty sneaky and you probably don't want to use these. So these are ad mob ads here. Um, right down here on the bottom. Uh, these are ads, you know, on a free web, uh, free application on your phone. Over here, pop-ups, look at how gross all that stuff is, right? We're popping up ads all over the place. Email ads right here. Above the fold, it's ads that are above that, that first, oh, above that first uh, piece of the web page, so you don't have to scroll down. And then we have floating ads right there. Payment methods for online advertising. So you might be thinking, okay, I have an advertisement for my product and I wanna get it out there. How do I get it on other websites? Well, there are companies that allow you to do this. And the most popular one is Google. Google has an ad program where you, you, know, you set up a, an account with Google, you tell them, hey, this is, these are the advertisements I wanna put out there. And then Google will go out and put it on websites for you. Um, now, how do you pay for that? Well, there are a couple of different models. One is CPM or cost per thousand, and, and M actually stands for thousand in Roman noodles. Uh, Roman noodles? I, I, I just mentally, I was trying to say Roman numerals, but apparently I have ramen noodles on the brain. 
Anyway, um, <laughs> so cost per thousand. So basically you pay a certain amount of money for every 1,000 qualifying impressions. Now in this case, impressions means either eyes, eyeballs on the ad itself or clicks on the ad. So every 1,000. Then you have CPC, which is cost per click. That's the amount paid every time someone clicks on an advertisement. Then you have CPA or CPL. This is cost per action or cost per lead. Uh, this is the cost paid when a desired reaction is taken by the user from the display of the ad, such as signing up for a newsletter, buying a product, whatever it might be, right? And, and, and you would set that action, whatever that action would be. Then flat rate. So this is just, I want to put a banner ad on, uh, you know, a thousand different websites. And regardless, of, it doesn't matter what traffic, the amount of traffic, all that stuff, I'm just going to pay a flat rate. Then you have CPE, which is cost per, per engagement. So advertisers pay for interactions with advertisements. Normally these are found in videos or apps. Um, so the, the ad will start with a rollover or a click that expands the ad, opens a game or video. Um, and that ad usually doesn't take people away from the web page. So this uh, usually is, con is in conjunction with those ads that actually are more interactive, let you do something. If you play that little game, inside of the advertisement, but you don't actually leave the website and go to that game's website. Um, that's still an interaction or an engagement. And um, as an advertiser, you might have to pay per engagement. Payment methods for online advertising uh, continued. So we have real time buying. So this is buying and selling of online ad impressions through real-time auctions that occur in the time it takes a web page to load. Here's how this generally works. Um, and this was a lot more common back in the day. I mean, this still happens, but um, it's a bit more sophisticated now. So what happens is, let's say you had a very popular website like CNN.com. It gets, you know, millions of clicks per day. Well, it's not going to have the same ads on it every time you go to that website, right? There are thousands of companies that want to advertise on CNN.com. So what happens is all of those thousands of companies that are trying to get their ad on the website above the fold, um, whenever someone goes to CNN.com, uh, there is a little bidding war that happens, right? And you as the owner of that company that are that is trying to advertise on that on that platform um, can set a rate at which you're willing to bid. Now that rate can be a range um, so that whenever, you know, th someone clicks on the web page, there's a random uh, feel to it. So you don't get the same ads all the time and you can set that range. And then whoever wins the bid, and remember, this is all virtual. This is all digital. We're not actually going in there and clicking a button to set a bid every single time. This you just set a rate and then you forget about it, and then your ran, your ad will pop up randomly depending on how high your bid is. It will show up more often than other times, right? Does this kind of make sense? It's a bit hard to explain in these terms because it's kind of um, it happens so fast, and there's really no interaction with a human. This is all algorithms and AI that's doing this for us. Then you have programmatic advertising, which kind of takes that a step further. Uh, these are machines buying ads based on criteria set by a company. So there's no human interaction here. A price can be set low or high for a specific target market. RTB is this kind of advertising, but programmatic advertising, you can essentially set a bot that will buy ads for you on the right web pages using analytics that you dump into it, and it will go out there and find your customers for you, okay? Um, the, 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 the amount of AI in digital advertising these days is incredible. Um, and these tools will allow you to really go out there and find your customers without having to really do anything. Now, this is why it was, you know, this is why we focus so much in the beginning of the class on who is your actual customer, right? What habits do they have? What music do they listen to? What products are they most loyal to? Because we need to know as much about our prototypical customer as we can so that whenever we you know, program these algorithms to go out and find our customers, um, we know exactly who we're looking for, right? 
And then we have promotional mix. That's essentially just a mixture of all of the different promotions and advertisements and deals and sales and all that stuff that you're gonna put out there. You wanna make sure you have a healthy mix of advertisements. You don't wanna just focus on one advertising stream um, because it may not be super effective. And if it's not effective and you waste a bunch of time focusing on one thing, right? Then you're gonna lose customers. This is the don't put all your eggs in one basket theory. So let's talk about tactics to get in front of a user. So ad networks. So these are groups of websites that all decide, hey, we're going to allow you to um, promote on all of these websites, but we're gonna allow all of these websites to promote themselves on your website as well. It's like a group that just says, hey, we're gonna market each other's websites. Then you have paid search advertising. This is advertising on search engines that will allow you to put your website link up higher in some, you know, for example, like Google search uh, engine, right? We all know that if you don't find your link or if you don't find what you're looking for on the first page of Google, rarely do we ever click, let's go to page two and see what's there. Um, now, sometimes when you do a Google search, you'll see the first couple links on there are actually labeled as ads. Those are promoted uh, Google search items um, and those are pushed to the top by paying for it, right? So you can do that. You can do a paid search advertisement. Then we have pay-per-clicks. These are advertisements which the cost is determined by the number of clicks an advertisement receives. Um, this is good. Uh, let's say you set up a pay-per-click pay model and you check your analytics at the end of the week and you notice that one website provided zero clicks and so you don't have to pay anything for that website and you realize, hey, that doesn't work, let's move to another website. But then another website, uh, it generated a thousand clicks, you have to pay for those thousand clicks, but you know for sure that uh, that advertisement was effective on that website because it brought in so many more, uh, so many new customers. Now the goal here is to set up your advertising so that you're making money from customers, bringing in customers, and you're making more money bringing in customers than it costs for you to run the advertisement, obviously, right? Google AdWords. Google AdWords is a search advertising program. Um, it allows you to display your advert on relevant search re results and across Google's entire content network. So you can set up an AdWords account and say, these are keywords that I want you to flag as being related to my website and I will pay you a certain amount of money to push my website up higher in the results whenever people search for these keywords. SEO, search engine optimization. This is incredibly important in digital advertisement um, because um, if you don't like I said before, if people can't find your website in the first page of Google searches, Google search results, they're, they're not going to buy your product or do whatever it is that, they, that you want them to do. So search engine opti optimization are things like paid search advertising, pushing your, your link higher up in the Google search, uh, pay-per-click ads to, to determine whether or not websites you're advertising on are high enough in there so that they get enough clicks. Sponsored results. Those are those uh, sponsored links at the top of a Google search. Um, and then organic search results, otherwise known as natural results. These are basically trying to find ways to naturally get your link in there or get your link to the top of the page without having to pay for it. Um, this just means, you know, this is just good, uh, analytics, good practice, trying to figure out exactly what sets your website apart from the rest of your customers and, and setting up the, the metadata in your web page so that the search engine finds specific results that are apply only to you as a company. And that's something that, you know, you would talk to your web developer about in the next term of this class, we're actually going to be developing a web page, uh, to, to sell our product. And that is something that you would want to consider whenever you're developing your web page. Online ad targeting techniques, contextual advertisement. Um, it's important that you advertise uh, to people in the right places. Um, for example, 
if someone is, let's see, when you see an ad for a sporting goods store or an online ticket broker appearing in a sports news page, that's contextual advertising, right? So if I'm on IGN, which is a, an ad, a, a website that's focused on video games and movies and pop culture and whatnot, and I see an advertisement for a video game, well, that's good advertisement. Uh, that's good contextual advertising because people who are reading articles about video games are probably customers who will more likely to buy video games, right? Then you have behavioral advertising. This targets visitors based on information that ad systems learn about their internet browsing behavior, such as pages visited, links clicked on, time spent on sites, and searches made. Um, if, if you have a customer whose behavior is to click on ads all the time, then they're probably, a, um, they're probably more likely to click on your ad and if they are more likely to click on your ad, well, they're probably also more likely to click or to buy your product. Um, but if you have a customer that doesn't generally click on ads as much, then maybe there's going to be a less aggressive marketing strategy toward that person. They're probably just someone who isn't swayed by advertisement too much. Most people fall roughly in the middle there. We don't click on most ads, but if we do see something that interests us, then we'll click on it and we'll, we'll you know, take a look. Most people don't really interact with ads as often as marketers wish they would, um, but they do click one or two ads a month uh, just to kind of, you know, only for products that really interest them. Then we have demographic targeting. This is something that you probably remember from the who is your customer uh, uh, assignment when we were talking about setting up our place in the marketplace, figuring out what demographic our customers belong to, and then targeting marketing to them specifically. Geographic targeting, uh, you know, if you have a local business, then you don't really want to advertise outside of that local area. Uh, keyword targeting, uh, looking for specific keywords um, and setting up specific keywords. Twitter also, you can do marketing on Twitter with promoted tweets. Um, you know, you, you can do Instagram promotions. There are all kinds of keyword targeting uh, uh, promotions that you can do. Then you have time-based, which basically says, I only want my ad to show up at specific times, maybe peak visiting times for specific websites, things like that. Um, so there's a lot more that goes into this, um, and you're going to learn a lot as you kind of practice this in real time. So this week, we're going to actually start building some of these ads. And when you uh, watch the video um, that shows you how to build these ads, you're going to, I'm going to walk you through my preferred method of building advertisements, just my way of thinking about how advertisements should look. Um, and uh, you're going to get a chance to make your own. So thanks for paying attention, and I'll see you in the next video.